What is up everybody from our AT&T 5G virtual studios? Welcome on into the call up. I'm Susanna Collins joined by the fabulous Jillian Sakovitz. We are fresh off our very first South by Southwest experience in Austin, Texas and number one. It was so amazing to be with you and record a podcast in person rather than virtually. Thank you very much. Number two, how awesome was Claudio Reyna. This was one of my favorite Lunch. interviews that we've ever done. And Jill, we're getting some good feedback on it. Rave the, people, rave, the people have spoken. Rave, rave so I'm just reviews. gonna I'm just gonna give ourselves a little pat on the back right now because it, it went off uh, so, so very well. And we're so grateful to Austin FC for uh, giving us that time and for Claudio Reyna for sharing everything that he did because it was a really great conversation. If you have not listened to it, then you should. You really should, especially ahead of World Cup qualifiers coming up. Just saying. Heck, heck, yes. And we have two iconic guests coming up in a little bit with uh, a big weekend ahead in Benny Failhaber and Ike Parra. We'll get into that in a moment. But you know what, Susanna Collins? <laughs> God. Spring is here. Yeah. And with, with the blooms came like kind of some wildness across Major League Soccer this weekend. This was kind of like the crazies were out, and I was very here for it. Um, Atlanta, I guess, being number one. Of Hey, we had Tiffany Haddish there. And I'm going to tell you, and everyone, if you haven't seen it, get on, get on it. We'll play it for you in a moment. It's but everywhere Tiffany, on Twitter. It's so good. T- let's play it for the people. Tiffany Haddish. Crashed our pregame show. Look at him, pretty T. <laughs> you play soccer. Tiffany's talking see, to she me, by the way. making me blush now. You see that? You see what soccer. you're doing? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See what you're doing here? You play soccer? I used to. Retired now. Oh, okay. Look yeah. better. You're talking to Mala Dew here. Big deal. I don't Big know who he is. He affects the man to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I ran to you before and said hi like r- really crazy. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't scare you away. No, you didn't scare me. Experience. You reminded me of the good old days. She okay. ready. We got. We got to keep her up here. I don't know who he is. We got to keep we her up here. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of the way. Guys, I'm gonna leave you to her. Right? Enjoy the night. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany Haddish could not get herself enough. Moa do. I am still. This is like the tenth time that I have watched this, and I am still blushing best, over the the whole thing. The whole best thing was thing just to wild. happen to MLS in 2022. hundred percent. So far, hundred percent. The woman Mo has more Adu. followers than MLS. I'm just saying. Mo Adu was oh, shook. Blushing. He was shook. It was great. And I'll be totally honest with you. So rewind a little bit. You know, we find out who's going to uh, nail in the golden spike. And, and mm-hmm. I think we had asked and we heard a comedian. So then I move on with my life. Because when you don't get like a name, like, yeah, outcast, you're like, well, you're this could like, be okay, anybody. Sure. Yeah. Well, then like right before our pregame show starts, someone points me, Jill, Tiffany Haddish is over there. And I've been asked, you know, when they say, like, if you could be one other person in the world, who would you be? My uh-huh. answer has been Tiffany Haddish. <laughs> so I was like, oh, oh, my God. So I run. I run to the um, field level suite that she's in. And she's taking a picture at, like, Haddish with her pointing to it with Mercedes-Benz Stadium in the background. And I'm leaping, leap, leaping, <laughs> Tiffany, Tiffany. And she's, like, scared. And then she's like, hi. And I'm like. I'm sorry to bother you. I just want to tell you, I think you're amazing. And we take this like selfie through the netting. So I think that that's where my Tiffany Haddish experience is. Oh no. And then I'm low key, super jealous that like (laughs) she, she, she wanted nothing to do with me. She just wants Mo. Mo. She was all about Mo. Can I also just give, I want to give some credit to Kevin Egan for playing the ultimate wingman. (laughs) Anyone needs a wingman, call Kev. (laughs) It was like, he's hired. That was incredible. Wow. I just, I still can't believe that you got to witness that whole thing firsthand. It was incredible. I've been telling anyone, anyone I can find. As you should. That is an amazing story. Also, she she is phenomenal. She didn't hit on me per se. She gave you some love. What did she say? What did she say? That I reminded her of the good old days. The good old days. That's right. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means, but let's take it. If anyone can tell me, hey, listeners, if you have any sense of what that means, (laughs) hit me up. Because she ready. She ready. She ready. 
Whoo! Um, yeah, it was so it was a wacky weekend of MLS action. Some of the games were just um, straight up bananas, including that Atlanta Montreal match. Oh my goodness! But um, <laughs> so, oh, oh yeah, that too. Yeah, that, that too. I mean, good, good. Going up Lord. one nothing, good then Lord. down three one, then tying three three with the uh, madness, Atlanta. absolute yeah. madness. So um, on Saturday night, I host a Twitter Spaces called MLS After Dark with Matt Doyle, our mm. very good friend. And we were going through kind of all of the games uh, that stood out to us that Saturday. One of the ones that we were talking about was Charlotte FC, obviously getting their first win in front of an incredible crowd at Bank of America sure. Stadium against New England, um, the reigning Supporter Shield winners. And so we were talking about this game and we made a point to mention that, yes, you know, the Revs. Number one, are coming off of CCL and a tough loss in CCL this week. They are without their two center backs, Andrew Farrell and Henry Kessler. Oh, and Matt Turner as well. So, you know, we were were kind of qualifying it. Like, you know, this is, there's still work to be done with the Revs. There are a few things that they need to work on, but like, you don't need to explain yourself to me. So I look down, I look down at my phone and I see that Henry Kessler is not only listening to this conversation, but he is also requested to speak. So what do I do? I say, well, this is what it's all about. Yeah, MLS After Dark is, uh, the whole point is to just get a little wild and crazy and weird. So um, I gave him the floor and he he took umbrage with uh, some of the things that Matt Doyle said. And, you know, and I said, look, you are perfectly entitled to defend your team and I love that you're doing it, but we also, you know, have a job to do as well. We have to kind of like call it as we see it as as analysts and whatever and it was fine and he gave us a quick little update on uh you know his recovery he said he's feeling good who knows did not give a timetable as to when he will return but it was just interesting because i was like you never know you never know who is listening to the words that are coming out of your mouth and in this case it was a player on the new england revolution who had some things to say and um listen i i put this out here as a call to action to mm-hmm. all players and coaches, mm-hmm. come on. It's an open space. Like, let's have the let's let's talk about it. I'm I'm super here for that. So hey. um it was just kind of it kind of threw me for a loop, Jill. I was like, Hey, if Tiffany oh. had taught us anything, it's shoot your shot. Whether you're, you know, uh Kessler sitting at home with an injury yeah. or you're Tiffany Haddish and you, you know, have like a love at first sight moment, whatever it is, people, shoot your Shot. Shot. Shoot your shot. Speaking of shots, uh, we're going to get into MLS Next Pro in just a moment, but I have a question for you and for the people at home. So uh, it was a really electric, fun game at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And I always think to myself, like, oh, the things I do and see, like, I should find a way to, like, reel this up into 20 seconds and just share it with the universe. And I went down a dark hole trying to make an Instagram reel this weekend, oh, and I God. couldn't. Oh, so God. I ended up like using TikTok oh, as God. like an editing platform, and I'm like, Jill. But now I'm on TikTok because I all I wanted to do was share 20 seconds of my experience, and I went from Instagram to TikTok to do it, and now I've got TikTok, I've got Instagram, I've got Twitter. So I just want to know from the people at home, and you, Sue's like, I can't keep all these. I need my head to not be in my phone all the time. So like. <laughs> What's got to go? I am of no use when it comes to TikTok because the whole thing. But it was I tried, good. I'll I say have that. tried. <laughs> I have tried. I have tried and have failed at TikTok. So yeah. I don't. I know it's something that I should have in my arsenal, and I know it's the way, especially the young kids. This is how they like to consume their their content. So I know it's important, but I just I don't have the energy. I am old, and I am. You are not. I am tired. You are a spring <laughs> chicken. You are a spring chicken. Uh, but you know who does have TikTok, Susanna, as I went down the dark hole of TikTok? <laughs> MLS Next Pro, hey. uh, which is kicking off this weekend. And that leads us to our two very special guests, like I mentioned, Ike Opara and Benny Failhaber, two guys that were teammates in MLS, shared a mic on the epic uh, BSI podcast. And now they are coaching together for SKC2, um, who are making their MLS Next Pro debut this weekend. That's the new developmental league launching on Friday. That is just going to elevate the game in North America. Um, so we dive into that. And also it's just fun to hang with these two. Isn't they're it? the best guys. They're they're They are such good personalities. Obviously they were teammates for a very long time. So they have that rapport. They had that incredible podcast together. So these are two guys that know each other really well. Um, they play off each other incredibly well. And I can only imagine how effective 
they are as coaches. Like if imagine I can, we were coaches. It, it, well, <laughs> depends on what. I think in some areas we'd probably MLS be Next pretty Pro. good. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's no be, ties. That's, that's all. There's no draws in MLS Next Pro. So like, but I'm so here that's for true. it. But I just think I, I'm I'm super excited that this is a tandem that um, are are going to be sort of uh, shaping the the future of of young soccer players in North America. I think it's a, a really really incredible fit for for both of them. And for those of you guys that don't know, MLS Next Pro is this new soccer league in the United States and Canada. And there's going to be 21 clubs. That's the inaugural season that's kicking off this coming weekend. Um, and uh, SKC2 is going to be coached by head coach Benny Philhaber and assistant Ike Opara. And they're going to play Colorado this weekend. And so we had an incredible chat with the two of them leading up to this opening weekend. It's it's really, really great. Time now for our at and 5G call to the field. We bring in one half of our incredible lineup today, a guy whose professional career spanned 15 years, an MLS Cup champion with SKC, 44 caps with the U.S. Men's National Team, and now head coach of SKC2, Benny Philhaber. Yay! Wow, thank you very much. Did we get that all right? Oh, I think you did. I mean, definitely. The, I don't check, know. I think it's 44 check. caps, but um, you would know better than me. Check, check, check. Like, yeah, I legend. read that. I actually, I like triple checked that one. So it's 44. That's what we're going with, Benny. Whatever Wikipedia says. Exactly. Collins, research department <laughs> slash host. Okay. <laughs> so welcome, Coach Failhaber. Um, so many hats in your career. Player, podcast host, now head coach. Um, why coaching? Um, I mean, it's it's how I stay close to the game, as close as possible, I guess, without being on the field. Uh, but it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I wasn't sure exactly what I would want to do. Uh, obviously I went through my podcast, so I was on, on the dark side with you guys for a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, I wanted to open the doors for potentially coaching. So I've been, you know, I did my B license. I'm on the A license now. Um, uh, I wasn't sure if maybe I wanted to go into, you know, a little bit of technical director. And so, uh, try to keep that Avenue open as well with, I'm actually doing sports management, uh, through SNHU almost done with that. So that'll be nice as well. So, um, yeah, just kind of kept all the, the doors slightly opened and, and kind of waited in to, to see kind of what opportunities came up. But, um, obviously coaching has been a lot, a lot of fun. Um, it's a lot of hard work, but it's nice to be able to to give kind of what you learn through your experiences and, and try and help younger players now try and achieve their dreams. So it's it's a lot of fun. Benny, you have been coached by some legends in the game. You think about guys like Peter Vermees and and Bob Bradley. Who would you say has been sort of the most influential coach that you've had for you now that you are in that role? Is there somebody that um, maybe you try to emulate or certain things from certain coaches that you've tried to instill upon the the younger generation? Right. Yeah, no, that's a good question, Suzanne. I think it's those two are at the top for sure. Bob and Peter, um, they had tons of influence on me. Obviously, both of them, I think, got the best out of me in, in, in different moments of my career. Uh, and so I think it's natural that I've taken a lot of what I've learned from them and tried to emulate it on the field. And so uh, it's it's exciting. But I've had I've had even other coaches, right? Like, uh, you know, rest in peace, Ziggy. Uh, he was he was one of the guys that gave me my first opportunity. And, and he had a big um, influence on me as well. Um, I've, you know, I've been coached a little bit by Bruce, uh, with, with the national team on occasion, but, um, there's no doubt that Bob and Peter are right at the top in terms of how they do things. Although I think they're very different in their own ways, but how they do things, how they get the best out of their players and, and, and make sure that their teams are prepared and ready for the game. And so I've tried to take a little bit of, uh, what, what they've taught me. If you had to say, would you say you're more Bob or more Peter? I think naturally I'm a little bit more like Bob. But I've, I've, yeah, I think I'm a little bit more like Bob. Um, But I think the thing is that the the thing that Peter has that I that I've always tried to, um, I don't add add to what I think I'm naturally like is is the motivational part, the part where he's an unbelievable leader, um, and he he's able to get everybody on board with his vision and and how he sees sees things, and that's one thing that I've I've. I've tried to kind of improve on because it's such a difficult aspect of it. And I think within MLS, it's so important, you know, because 
it is a grind. It's a tough season. There's so much parity. There's not any one team that's so much better than the others, like some other leagues in Europe. And so you really got to have focus for 34 games. And, and I think that's one thing that Peter always gets from his team. Yeah, and that's something you know uh, very well. First-hand experience there. Um, Benny, let's talk about MLS Next Pro. Um, they're going to play their first games this weekend. SKC2 will face Colorado. This is a, a brand-new professional league for the next generation of soccer players in North America. So this is a third tier in the U.S. soccer system. When you look at this league and what they are setting out to do, what do you think this means for the game here in North America? Well, and it's very bright, the future, you know, because now we're offering real opportunities for players along the pathway through our academy, young players that maybe aren't quite good enough yet to play in MLS. Um, we're giving them games, you know, we're giving them games against real competition in a real league um, that matters. Uh, and so guys will have the opportunity to showcase themselves and continue to develop. And I think that, as we continue to have more and more players, uh, you know, join the the coaching ranks, we also are able to offer the things that we've learned in in the MLS game to try and help them develop to become those next MLS players. So uh, I'm I'm very excited about not only the job that we're doing, but the, what the league has created and the future of what this league looks like. So it's it's very exciting to be a part of the first year. I don't know if anybody knows quite what to expect in terms of. The competitive level, I, you know, obviously I've been with our team, but I have no idea what, like you said, Colorado Rapids second team, what they're going to look like on Sunday. And so it is exciting and, and it's going to be a little bit of a learning uh, curve for all of us. But it, I think it's a great pathway that we've created for our young players. Super, super exciting uh, and innovative. Excited to see what all of this means, especially as we look to the World Cup uh, in 2026. But let's talk about the World Cup 2022. Benny. We have some U.S. men's national team questions uh, for you. The decisive qualifying window is coming up. Will the U.S. qualify or will they miss it for the second straight cycle? Um, the first game being at Azteca in Mexico, a place in 16 World Cup qualifiers. The U.S. has never beaten Mexico. What are the odds you think it happens on Thursday? Oof. <laughs> I think the based on what you just told me, the odds are low. Um <laughs> Right. I'll say we have the team to do it. We have some, okay. some players that can definitely uh, make, make that, uh, that game go in our direction. And I, and I actually think that the U.S. team is a better team than the Mexican team right now. I think the U.S. team is growing. I think the Mexican team has relied a lot on, on older players. Um, and so there is a little bit of that shift going on. But no, uh, no great power like like the Mexican national team is going to go away quietly. And so it, we, we're going to have to take it from them for sure. Put your coaching hat on coach Phil Haber. If you are coaching the U S men's national team, let's say you're uh, you're, you're Greg Burhalter, you put, put yourself oh, in his boy. shoes. What, what, what's the biggest focus <laughs> for this team heading into these next three matches? Um, you know, are you, are you more concerned about sort of player rotation? Cause we've heard a lot of talk about that, how they're going to utilize guys. What, what's the focus? What would you do, Benny? Well, Coach first Benny? of all, Susanna, remind me, I know Mexico is the first game and that's on everybody's head, but yes. the next two games, are they Panama, home away? At Panama, home, Panama at and home. And then, um, at, at Costa, Costa Rica. Rica, at Costa Rica. Okay. Yeah. So. Look, I, I, I mean, the U.S. is in a pretty good position right now. Top three make it. Um, but anyways, I think that we're in a really good spot. And so although everybody wants to talk about the Mexico game, I don't really think that's the most important game by any means. Panama at home is the, is the most important because it's the one that you got to get all three points. Um, and then obviously, depending what you get on those first two games, that last game becomes very important against Costa Rica as well. And so Costa Rica is a team that hasn't done so well this uh, in this cycle but they've they've started picking up the pieces here late and you know it could it's always going to be a tough tough game down there and so um yeah i think going against mexico you want to try and have a really good mindset about what you want to do but not overemphasize any one game um whatever we get in mexico even if it's zero points it's zero points you go get three against panama and you put yourself in a pretty good position and and i think if you get if you get six points in this in these three games you're pretty much, I think, good as good as gold. And then, um, you know, three or four even is not the, the end of the road. So just to make sure that we're all with our, uh, you know, uh, not, not, not getting ahead of ourselves in terms of what we need <laughs> to achieve here. 
Coach Benny just rolls off the tongue. It really, it really <laughs> does. We're going to bring your assistant, Ico Parr, in in just a moment. Um, but just name one job, Benny, for me. What's a job you look at, at like long term? Like, I'd like to do that. For sure, sporting's first team. Don't tell Peter though. Okay. I'm just kidding. I, I've told I've told Peter that before. I don't think he's going anywhere anyway. I soon, think so. Peter would be a fan of that, um, <laughs> like he's told us in the past. All right. Before we bring in your assistant coach, Iko Para, a big friend of the call up. Um, you know what? Let's bring him in. The last time we spoke to the two time defend MLS defender of the year, um, and like I, we were all in our bathrobes and our pajamas. Yeah. We were in lockdown. Ooh like the first few weeks of COVID when we thought like this that was it wasn't going to be two years long. Man, I it feels so good to see you like normally <laughs> dressed, like potentially leaving the house today. And with hair and with hair. Look yeah, at that. No, good. No. Do you, I, okay. Changed since we last uh, spoke. Right there's there. been a lot. There's been a lot of changes since we last spoke. But one thing that seems to remain constant for you, Ike, is that you just you can't quit Benny Failhaber. Like you, <laughs> I, it's just you know whether it's teammates on the field, whether it's co-hosting a podcast together. You guys, just I mean, it's just this this unstoppable <laughs> tandem. What what? How did this come about, this partnership in coaching? You know, was this like, was was Benny getting on the phone like, Ike, I need you, man. Or were you knocking on his door like, I'm into this. How, tell us how it all went down. He made me beg, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of went down like that, to be fair. I was minding my own business on like a Tuesday at night. <laughs> on a Wednesday at 2 p.m., I said yes for some reason. And here we are. But no, I mean. Obviously, uh, he, he's more of the attacking brain and I'm more of the defensive brain. So I think that, that and obviously being friends and how we view the game is very similar and we have no problem um, talking about it, you know, disagreeing and, and coming with solutions. We're very solution oriented. And so uh, it kind of just worked out perfectly. And, you know, I think I'd be kicking myself if I said no to the opportunity, to be honest. I mean, I had no idea if coaching was ever going to be in my future. Um but, you know, I think there's one of the things looking back that if I had said no, I probably would have regretted it. Um, so here we are. <laughs> when I was a young aspiring soccer player, if I could have had Benny and Ike as my coaches, my whole life could have been different, mm -hmm. way different. The trajectory I could have been on. Can you guys describe your coaching style and the synergy? Like, who's the good cop? Who's the bad cop? Like, tell us how this duo works. Well, I mean, I think Ike... Uh, said it best in terms of at least tactically where I definitely see one side of the game and, and, and he sees the other. And I mean, that's one of the big reasons why I wanted him there as well. Obviously, we have good chemistry and we can kind of tell each other, you know, no, you're not thinking straight in, in uh, maybe a few other words. But um, <laughs> we, we have good conversations in terms of figuring out, um, you know, what our problems are and what our solutions. And it's funny, we look at the game in a way where uh, – I'm thinking, oh, man, our line isn't stepping up high or our, our team isn't pressing high enough. And Ike's like, well, look at our back line. And I'm not even looking at the back line. And so we're both looking at different areas of the field, which is great because, you know, with with a couple set of eyes, you see a little bit more than with, with just one. So it's been good. Um, and and I think that, uh, you know, the the chemistry in in inside, like the the technical room where we talk about things, I think that's been obviously one thing that's really good with uh with how long we've been together like anything to add there is this uh did yeah, no. benny hit the nail on the head he did and i would agree i think obviously you know being relatively new for me for sure Benny, but for me for sure um you know i think we've been able to be very natural in a lot of ways that i think our players resonate with and there are some things that maybe for me most of them benny aren't as natural yet but are improving but i think you know being you know pretty honest with your players and um, you know, they're going through a process as kind of our, as I am and we are, but there's never been like this, I don't know, there's always been just truth in, in everything we try to do and uh, trying to create a plan that makes sense for everybody. And I think that's been pretty cool um, to see, you know, stepping off the field onto the other side of the field. I'm very curious because um, as former teammates and and obviously former players, I'm. how do you think that you would have, uh, responded to like Ike, how would you have responded as a young player to Benny's coaching style and Benny vice versa? Like, wh how do, would you guys have been effective coaches for your younger, younger versions of yourself? I'm curious. Um, 
I, I, I'll go first. I'll say that. So one thing that I mentioned there is we try and be pretty straightforward with the players. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not really hiding anything or, you know, playing games in any way. Um, you either want to be there and you want to get better or you don't want to be there and we don't need you there either. And so uh, I think it's a pretty straightforward conversation and and they understand that from our perspective. And I could tell you 100 percent as a player, I always respected that. You know, and, and I could tell you that Peter was always like that with me. Bob was always like that with me. So the coaches that got the best out of me were, were guys that were just straightforward and let me know, look, this is where you're at. This is what you need to improve on. If you don't, you're not playing. If you do, you will. I mean, it's just a lot easier that way. And I think, um, you know, the, the, the players have been pretty responsive so far. Yeah, uh, I would agree. And perspective changes everything throughout life and throughout the game. And so, the perspective that I have now, you know, being able to connect with maybe my younger self, I think Penny with maybe my younger self resonates probably a lot more than if, you know, he'd never been through some of these experiences. So uh, I think it easily would be, uh, you know, a match made in heaven, I guess. Uh, I remember being coached by Benny, but, I, I've all, but from a personal standpoint, you have to get to know every player who's different. But from a personal standpoint, I've always wanted the straightforward truth. You know, I wanted the objective, yes or no, black and white, as much as you can create in soccer, which isn't always that case and mostly gray, to be fair. So um, try to be as black and white as possible. Ike, uh, we asked Benny, if you had to look to a coach in MLS or U.S. soccer, who's a coach that you'd say Ike Opara is most like? (laughs) Um, I don't know if I'm personality like any of the coaches I've had, I guess. Um, I mean, you take some things from every coach that you've had for sure, but I would say if I was going to, I would take the most from Jay Vidovich, my college coach, um, and then from from Peter. Those would be the two. Um, and then I, I take some, you know, just, yeah, I, I would say those would be the two. And I'll <laughs> I love it. Okay, so you guys are are getting ready for um, SKC, SKC 2's first game this weekend against Colorado. Um, the journey starts here. What does success look like for you guys in this first season in MLS Next Pro? Benny, yeah, I mean, it's, you. yeah, it's a tough question. Like I said, we really don't know what to expect. Yeah, in, in terms of the the league and and the season as a whole. Um, and obviously just our opponents, I, you know, I think that every team is going to be different in how they handle it, whether it be, you know, tons of Academy young kids that they push through, or it's a lot of professional guys that maybe, you know, aren't quite good enough to play in MLS or in the USL or whatnot. And then I think there's a lot of teams in the middle where, um, which, which is where I think we lie in terms of getting some experienced veterans in there in the mix, helping Academy guys and younger players, uh, continue to develop. And so, for us, I mean, I think it's it's an easy answer just because it's a very MLS answer, and that's make the playoffs and then see what happens from there. You're well trained, well trained. <laughs> like, so, what surprised you the so most like, about the about I hate to call them the kids. What surprised you the most about now being on the coaching side of things? Um, man, you, you learn something new every day. I would say one of the funniest things. Well, there's a funny one, which is the penny situation. Making sure the opinion <laughs> for making sure the players are accounted for it, going from one drill to the next. Cause sometimes you're like, Oh, did I forget her name? And then you're like trying to figure it out on the fly, <laughs> like little things like that administrative that you don't even think are big deals are actually pretty tough to deal with. Um, and then, you know, trying to juggle with our Academy who's coming in first team players coming down. And so trying to figure out who's going to be there at practice some days is tough. Um, and then having to be on the fly, which both of our, both of, both of us are pretty adaptive. So that's not, mm-hmm. Uh, but it'd be nice sometimes to have a, a set plan, which is what we do have. And it goes that way from, you know, Monday through Friday or Monday through Sunday. Um, but typically rarely happens. So I'm always being adaptive. Wow. Just a whole a whole new world for both of you. This is yeah. uh, incredible. We we are so excited to watch you guys uh, do your thing on the sidelines. This is like a, a whole new version of Ike and Benny. And uh, we are so here for it. Before we let you go, we want to play a quick little game. With you guys, um, we're going to give you some scenarios, little like coaching scenarios, and um, you have to tell us like how the person would react as coach. So 
This is Ike's one. interrogation flip. <laughs> We're just, just in, yeah, you're interrogating. <laughs> We're interrogating you. I'm getting a little sweaty again. It's better. Oh, got this anxiety exactly. for a while. Okay, so Ike, right. your star player, five minutes late for the bus. How does Benny react? Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, he, he, and I would know depending on like the hours leading up to it and his mood, then I can call sure. But like, if you're just going to give me a hypothetical without much context, no context. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. Let's he say, could, let's, Benny hasn't eaten yet. He's a little hangry. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, he's um, he's not gonna be. He's gonna be pretty. He's gonna be straightforward about you know being fine and all. But like he, it depends. He can turn it up from you know five to ten in that range. Mm -hmm. Benny, is that kid starting five minutes late for the bus? It depends. Is Hi. it the is it the first time he's ever been late? Oh, um, is it yeah. the seventh time he's ever been late? First time. First time. I'll probably give him a pass, and yeah, I'll okay. probably start him. All right. So um, you're in the game. Uh, one of your guys is arguing with his teammates, kind of the whole game. You sub him out in the 75th minute. So, Ben, you're coaching, and you send him over Ike's way. What's Ike saying to the to the young man? Oh, man. Well, why did I sub him out? Uh, he's just been kind of going at it with his teammates the whole time. He's just he's just not kind of it's – not, it's not his day. Uh, Ike's going to – sit him down and tell him the things that he could have worked on as opposed to talk about everybody else that he's uh, complaining about. Easily. Easily. <laughs> I like this. All right. Um, an attacker, like one of your like main guys, your, your number nine, he misses a, a, a sitter, just a, a wide, wide open net. Um, what does, like, what does, so what does Benny say to the kid? <laughs> um, Be careful. I, <laughs> Wait, what does Benny say to the attacker, or like just yeah. out loud at the moment? Oh, <laughs> well, well, yeah, I like and, that. Yeah, I mean, the reaction you would see pretty much any coach have. So, um, <sighs> you'll get him next time, kiddo. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's not happen. That's nice. I think part of why uh, Benny's a deep thinker in a lot of ways, and so. He's going to approach it in a way where he's pretty stern, uh, but like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. Guys, this is you. This is going to happen at some point. Oh yeah, season. it's going to happen. And then you're going to have to report back to us and tell us like yeah. how this all went down because I'm very is it, curious. Yeah, there's a Ford that's struggling. There's a Ford that's banging goals nonstop, and right. it, it depends. So and much that goes into it. This and is why you're good coaches. You're considering all of this. We did yeah. not. We're just asking you, dumb interview questions. I know how we react to every single one of those scenarios. It's just hard to think about which one would happen. I, I appreciate the thoughtfulness that's going into your coaching style. I agree. Just throwing that out there. Benny, before we let you go, a player is airing his grievances and his aggravations with the team to the media. What are you going to do? Oof, that's not good. Um, yeah, we'll definitely have to bring him in first. I, look, the reality is you don't treat everybody the same. That's just, that's just the reality. Mm. Everybody is treated fairly, but not the same. And people are different. And you got to, you know, kind of motivate them differently and talk to them differently. But um, if 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 it's a person that is creating a problem within the team and, you know, making the team uh, not the, the primary focus, then it, it could be one of those where he's out of here. Right. And if it's uh, if it's one of those where, you know, maybe he lost his way and he said something that, he, you know, he kind of regrets to some extent, then it's a, you can have a sit down conversation and, and let him know, like, look, these moments are bound to happen. We got to find better ways to, uh, you know, address them, and and we can have a conversation with him and the team. So, uh, I think it just depends. And and I think that one, one thing that we're seeing here is, first of all, the questions are not dumb; they're smart questions, Thank and you. there are many different ways to solve. There's many different ways to solve a lot of different problems that we're going to run into, Ike. So you better be ready. Cool. 
Come this, on, is, this, this is why is you guys are great. Coaches. This is great. I mean, my goodness, if I was a young player, I would could only dream of, <laughs> of having both of you. Oh. Um, let's yeah. keep Ike. Coach Benny's got to get to um, more coaching classes, so we're gonna yeah. let Coach Benny go. And Ike, Benny, you good stay. luck this weekend. You have to stay for one more segment. If you hey, you either. guys, you, I'll, I'll give you guys some questions that you can ask Ike. The fact that I'm going to the A license for this week, Ike's the boss. He's the head coach there for the next couple days. So you get, yeah, you guys can ask him questions about how <laughs> he's gonna run things differently. Substitute teacher. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, right, Benny. Bye, bye, Suzanne. Benny. Bye, Jillian. Thanks for having me. Good luck this weekend. Now that Benny's gone, I got to know. <laughs> you spot a player breaking curfew. Like you're just sitting in the hotel lobby, like going over your notes or whatever, and you spot a player breaking curfew. And I know you're going to ask me by how much. I'm going to say 45 minutes. <laughs> but he doesn't know that he saw you. Do you go let him know like that? Like how I do you get nervous? That? This just made me uncomfortable. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm walking over there. Yeah. yeah. But how I approach it and who I, I mean, again, everyone's different, but mm -hmm. like academy player, you know, who's breaking curfew, that's a whole different issue to have right. to deal with versus, you know, a contracted player potentially and or first team guy who maybe they have different rules because, you know, they have curfews that they're used to. So it all depends. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not just letting that slide. Did you ever get in trouble, Ike? Were you a, were you a rule follower as a player? uh yeah yeah, yeah. Well, but but here's the thing we, we you know we talk about this all the time communication remember the first time you were a kid and you you did you know you did something wrong and you you told your parents let's say and that fear and that feeling of just dread and you were scared yeah. i mean imagine if your parents had reacted so negatively you'd be scared to ever say something ever again mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's also kind of a two-way street. Just because I spot something doesn't mean that I'm, you know, to a point where I have that player shut off moving forward. So, I mean, communication is always difficult. It's never easy, but trying to be um, pretty clear um, and, and allow grace when it's needed uh, on top of discipline when it is. So, I, We haven't talked to you in two years. Like I mentioned, besides from yeah. moving to Kansas City to hang out with Benny and be the most dynamic coaching duo in MLS, without a doubt, MLS's stratosphere. Yeah. What else is going on, Ike? That's a heavy loaded question. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like everyone, I disappeared, I fell off the face of the earth and- We uh, missed you. So yeah, 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 a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot went on in those two years. Uh, and I'm still on the mend and as I'm trying to recover mm -hmm. uh, for medical issues and whatnot, but yeah, it was uh, dark times, you know, wondering if, you know, if I was ever gonna, quote unquote be normal you know mm -hmm. i was gonna be dead before i was 40 also oh. and, um yeah day to day was tough to say the least that some other things going on in my life that also were tough including my wife it was uh it was chaotic so um no i'd like to think that i'm on the other side of that but uh you know day to day it's, things change and so you know working with benny and, and the whole sporting organization they kind of knew where i was at with everything and you know they were willing to um you know, not necessarily, necessarily take me in, but like, you know, yeah. understand that some of my you know, disabilities, whatever you want to call it at the moment, are still kind of around. Um, but, you know, working with me when, when needed. So that's where it's at. Well, this, I mean, we're so, we're just so happy to see you again, as, as Jill said. And I think like, you know, you were a two-time, you know, MLS Defender of the Year. The the career that you had um, was was so special and so remarkable, and we loved watching you so much. And I hate the way it ended, but can I just say, like, unabashedly, how happy I am to see you um, still within yeah. the MLS sort of <laughs> spectrum sure. here because you yeah. well, you make it better, you know. And I think that what these young players can learn from guys like you and your experiences and, and guys like Benny um, is really uh, you, you can't, you can't overstate the importance of that. And I just, I feel like, I feel like they're in very good hands, Ico Para. So I'm just, I'm just grateful that you're uh, you're here and around. We love you. And <laughs> like, no, Thanks. we're so, we're so, yeah. we're so grateful. And we're so grateful that um, you gave us your time once again, because yeah. you're, you're one of our all time faves. Yeah. Ico Para. Yeah. Again, yeah, thank you guys for having me. And one of these days, I'll 
probably we, we joked about the podcast, obviously, but maybe we have to fire back up and do like a ten series <laughs> on where I went and what happened to me because it was uh, it was something. But it, it, it sounds like it. When you're ready, when yeah. you're ready, anytime. We are we are open and available. I gotta have a little fun with you before we let you go. Um, so on this show, we have a, we already copied your interrogation, but we have a segment called Here for This. And we discuss if we're here for something yeah. or not. It's yeah. what the kids say. Um, as all of your you know Academy kids, I'm sure you hear them say it. Or maybe now it's outdated. I don't yeah, know. It's probably. But anyway, I have a Here for This. Okay. Um, the iconic video of Kai Kamara and CJ Sapong doing the Irish jig resurfaced like it does every St. Patrick's Day. Yep. Okay, watch this part. So, okay, they go get their props. <laughs> But I, I witnessed something this time around that I hadn't noticed in the past. Graham Zussi. Ripping <laughs> their, li- their beautiful little St. Patty's Day hats off their heads and tossing them at the boards. I'm going to guess here Graham was worried about yellow card um, for using props in a celebration. Um, but as someone who played with these guys, are you now that you're a coach, are you like more team Kai and CJ in that moment? Or are you more team Graham? um (laughs) i'm more um i'm team both (laughs) do it when it applies be smart enjoy yourselves but yeah be yourself have some creativity be that's the one thing that i don't we don't want to do restrict their personalities oh i like that if you're going to be you know get fined in yellow cards nonstop, (laughs) then all right express yourself yeah potential issue there potentially well if they're getting fined they're probably cut it themselves but um yeah that's true yeah i thought it when i saw how mad graham was you know because he's he was pissed yeah i thought it had to do with the yellow card because i think for using like a prop in your celebration you can get a yellow that's what i was thinking who knows that was also 2012 so i yeah. feel like the, the rules were probably a little different. I, I don't know. Maybe he, did, with maybe MLS. he didn't like the dance. Maybe he was just like, <laughs> maybe he hates St. Patrick's Day. Exactly. Uh, no, I know him enough. He doesn't hate St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, that's not it. <laughs> Definitely not that. Oh my God. Well, Ike, um, incredible to, to see you. Good luck this season. Yay! Coach Opara, we are we our rooting day. for you. Always and uh, yeah, please come back and and see us at some right. point. We'll do a little um, check in, see how the season's going for you. A big thanks to Ike Opar. So good to see him on the mend um, after dealing with a string of concussions in what was an illustrious uh, career for him. And what a gift to those kids to have those two as co- as coaches. I know, right? Like I would want to be coached by Ike and Benny. Oh, sure. Like that is just an outstanding duo right here there. For that. So here for that all the way. We are also here for, okay. We are here for, we're always here for guys pushing the envelope in terms of like their fashion choices. Correct. Mm. Like we mm-hmm. encourage it. Even if maybe it misses the mark a little bit, like at least you put yourself out there. A for effort. A for effort. A for effort. So um, I, number one, I just want to give some love to a a friend of the show, New York Red Bulls, John Tolkien, who I don't know if you saw this look, (laughs) but this, you know what? I think he looks great. Ordinarily, jorts offend me to my core. Like I am like, no, 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 no. No. Like men in jorts is just not okay. This. I love, I love it. I love everything about this look. I love the like tropical vibe shirt, the jorts, the shoes, his crazy hair. I just, I love how much confidence this kid has. And he pulls it, he pulls that off. You know, not many people can pull that off. You want to know who John Tolkien is in MLS? Who? I think he's the Joe Burrow of MLS oh, because oh, Joe, I like that. Joe Burrow leading up to the Super Bowl, like kind of had that like nineties <laughs> weird look and he yes. made it look great. I so mean, cool. The mullet fits. So cool. It a hundred percent does. I just love it. I hope he continues to just kind of like push the boundaries of the, the fashion choices um, and continue to rock it with such confidence. John Tolkien, a plus. 
from the call. Here for you that. Um, I want to give a shout out, um, if we're giving out a golden hanger this week, which it sounds like we are, to this man, Ram. <laughs> I will be totally honest. I didn't know who you were, but now I do. Bonguba Sway Sengwan, who made his debut with Minnesota United. And I, I may have been bad at that, but I've been listening all morning to him pronouncing his own name. Um, new 21-year-old striker from South Africa for Minnesota United, who debuted this weekend. And, dude, if you're serving that, in your debut that was his so that was his the first time of him like making the entrance and that is what he put together if you're if you're listening to this it is like a leper a leopard jacket he's got the the pants that are like are they cuffed and tapered and then he's got the loafers on it's i don't know i don't care i don't know what else he has on i saw i saw a cheetah jacket yeah cheetah that's what it is It, it looked amazing well done what's his name yeah how do i say it so, oh, sorry, I said debut. He made his first start. First on, start. On Saturday. Oh, okay. Yes. okay. My apologies. Bongubaswe, Sengwan. Bongubaswe. But I'm going to play you how he says it, and then I want you to tell me how, how I'm doing. Okay, I'm listening. Bongubuse Sengwan. Bongubuse Sengwan. Bong, Bongubuse. I, I hope I did you justice, but I'm wow. your biggest fan. That was, oh man. Keep I your eyes, love it. keep your love eyes it. out for that. So, uh, two big scores, but Susanna Collins, you had a miss. I did have a miss, and I, I kind of hate this miss because I, I, because as we said at the top of this, I love when guys take yeah, a are chance. Are we hurting ourselves here? Sometimes it doesn't always work out. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I also hate to do this because this was such a winning weekend for Charlotte. They get their first win. Um, Carol Swiderski scores two goals and Miguel Angel Herrera was so happy. There was this incredible camera shot of him just like smiling, taking it all in the like, massive crowd at Bank of America Stadium. But you guys, this this hybrid mock turtleneck sweatshirt thing. Bill Belichick's <laughs> I don't get it. I just don't get it. And I am not here for that. To- I don't even know how to just like, what is it? You is it a I sweatshirt? To, you know what I need to point out? Yeah. Those photos are going to go down in the record books. I know. Because that's I what know. he was sporting in the first one. I just, like, that's not going to go away now. I know. No, forever, forever. And I just, I, I no. Keep I will say, we don't want to throw His shoes, wanna, his shoes were fantastic. The shoes he was wearing were, were fantastic. But I just, no, that top, I'm, listen, we are still, we are going to revisit our power rankings at some point. And I'm just saying all of this is, I got to shoot out. I got to shout out my number one, Jimmy C, who was rocking clear frames this weekend. He was. He totally clear was frames. the frame. Oh, Jimmy C. And this is something I think that we can all just get on board oh, with yes. um, because this is amazing. David Beckham um, just continues to be an outstanding human being. This past weekend, he gave his Instagram feed to a Ukrainian doctor who has been helping deliver babies um, to women who are literally in bomb shelters and giving birth. He has 72 million followers. Okay. Just about 72 million followers. And he handed over his Instagram said here, like, let's raise awareness. This is what this looks like right now in the Ukraine. This is what the people of Ukraine, these are what these expecting mothers are having to deal with right now. And I just thought, you know what, like we feel so helpless so often. And like a guy like David Beckham, who has a massive, massive platform, basically saying to the world, like, Hi, open your eyes. This is what's going on right now. And I just thought that was a really um, powerful thing to do because knowledge is power and people need to know what is what is going on. So using um, the BS of social media to actually exactly exactly. So I just thought that was really, really cool. He's amazing. Come on our podcast. What's on tap? Well, all of the MLS Next Pro action kicks off this Friday, March 25th, as St. Louis City 2 hosts Rochester, New York FC at Herman Stadium at 8 p.m. Eastern in front of Jill, what is expected to be a sellout crowd. I am going to be there alongside Taylor Twellman, uh, Poppy Miller, Steve Cangiolosi. It's like uh, the, the, the dream team of uh, broadcasters. 
going to be in St. Louis for MLS Next Pro. So it's going to be really fun. I'm very I excited. I have major FOMO right now. I'm super excited. I think it's going to be really, really fun. Benny Failhaber and Ike Opara side sporting Kansas City 2 will be in action against the Colorado Rapids 2 on Sunday, March 27th, all a part of MLS Next Pro. All of the matches are going to be available for viewing on MLSNextPro.com. Fantastic. Also, guys, the decisive window of World Cup qualifying is upon us. Deep breaths, everybody. Um, It all begins this Thursday, March 24th, as the U.S. men's national team takes on Mexico at the Azteca, 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, Also, the Canadian men's national team, they kick off their World Cup qualifying window on Thursday at 10.05 p.m. Eastern as they take on Costa Rica for the full schedule um, of all these qualifiers. Head on over to MLSsoccer.com. And you can join us on MLS YouTube for a very special club and country watch-along show featuring none other than DeMarcus Beasley, yes, here for that. And that'll kick off this Thursday at 9.30 Eastern. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. What's up, everybody? It is Susanna Collins and Jillian Sackovitz, co-hosts of The Call Up. And if you want more Call Up action, hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube, right there. And also make sure that you download every episode of The Call Up every single Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And while you're here, why not check out some of these other videos as well?